So you've seen our episode on how to make your own laundry detergent. I hope you love it as much as I do, and I do hope it saved you a lot of money. But now it's time for us to make a rudimentary washing machine to go with it. This is super simple. It only takes about one or two items that you might already have. It's going to save you money in the future, and I hope you never have to use it. But in a grid down scenario, oh, you would be so thankful to be able to wash your own clothes. <laughs> Stick around. So for this easy little project, you probably have everything you need already right around the house. But just in case you don't, I want to encourage you, you can get all of it down at your tractor supply. And no, they are not a sponsor of this or an affiliate. I just love them because they're good people most of the time. Anyway, what I like is that their five gallon buckets are also made in the USA. And I am proud to be from the USA but you get whichever ones work for you or what you have on hand. You'll need two five gallon buckets with no holes and no cracks in them. And you will notice that they do often crack and, and get holes. So check them carefully. And then you're going to need a brand new, remind yourself that I said brand new plunger, okay? You probably have one on hand. Don't, don't use the one you have on hand at home if it's not brand new. All right, and then I want you to get yourself a drill that has a drill bit that's really the bigger the better. You, if you've got a quarter inch like I've got here, that's gonna work great, but if I had had an, a half inch drill that's even bigger than this, I would say that would be a great size because you're gonna want a, a charged up drill to, to make several holes in this. So to start this project, you're going to look at your buckets, get a good visual of them so that you can see how much space you have between the top bucket that's stacked inside the bottom one. And if I were to look at it from the inside and show you, there's about this much gap down there below. That's where the water will catch and that's great. But that means that I am going to want to um, just make sure that I've eyeballed it well so that I know where I'm gonna start drilling my holes up here in this top bucket. You're gonna separate the buckets and I'm gonna set the bottom one down below and we're gonna just take this top bucket and see if we can't drill holes that make it look a whole lot like your washing machine um, drum that you already have. So from the top, I'm not wanting the water to come all the way up to the to the top of it. So I'm gonna start about six inches down from the top of this bucket. And if you'd like, you can make a little mark there. I'll do that now so that I'm doing it the right way. And then from the bottom, I would just start maybe about an inch up from the bottom. But, so we'll put all our holes in between these two lines. You're eyeballing it. You don't need to make special measurements, but we are also going to drill holes all the way in the bottom as well, because this is where all of the washing is gonna take place. And I don't want the holes so close together that they might compromise the integrity of the bucket. So really about two inches apart is gonna be just fine, all right? You do what works for you and with whatever quality of bucket you have to work with. So let's get started on that. I've got a well-charged drill, and I am literally, it's very quick and very easy, but I'm just gonna literally make some holes right down through here. Just like that, there's the first one, makes them pretty clean. And if you stick around, I'm gonna make about 100 more of these. So here we go. I think we're done with that, at least on the sides. Now, you know we gotta get the bottom, but the sides are all beautifully eyeballed and drilled. And now I'm gonna do about the same thing on the bottom. All right, I think we've got it. Let me show you. It's a mess and we still gotta clean off all of the, the debris and such before we do our first batch but you can see how many holes I have there probably put one or two more in here just in a few of these open spaces and we'll get it all cleaned off and we're ready to make our first batch of clean clothes how easy was that 
All right, meet me back here in a minute. So now you have your washing machine drum ready to go. It's got all the holes in the bottom, all the sides. You notice I only went up that far and we still have a good six inches at the top. You're ready to take that bottom bucket, and I forgot to clean it out. There it is. All right, take that bottom bucket and set it underneath, and you're going to just let the top bucket rest right down in it. I like lining them up so that they're pretty, if, if that's pretty. And you're ready to do your first load of laundry. Now, off camera, very roughly, I cut a hole in the top because if you want to be fancy, you can set that on top to just kind of keep the water and splashing to a minimum while you're working. But it's time for you to load your clothes and load your water and load just a little bit of, of that homemade detergent that I already have shown you how to make. If you needed to treat your fabric, go ahead and get good, um, whatever it is that you like to, to spot treat your clothing. So all we're gonna do is just load the, the laundry in there, put our hot water in. Now this is cold water I'm showing you today, but we're gonna put our hot water in. Remembering that that bottom part is gonna store water. So you need to have the water filled up higher. I'm gonna fill it up, oh, about here. That'll take you about two gallons worth of water but you don't want to overfill the water if you have your clothing in there. It's good to load your clothes first so you know that how much water to, to put in. That one gallon already is covering that bit of clothing that I put in there already. Then I take my homemade laundry detergent and I eyeball it and throw in just a smidgen of it. I have a very small batch today. Then I put the lid on with the, with the new clean plunger and I start washing. And literally, this is how your grandmothers did it and your great-grandmothers did it. Back in the day, they didn't have plastic fancy buckets like this, but it was a very similar process unless they had one of those washing boards. And you could use this for your washing board style washing if you wanted to do that as well. But this is amazingly effective. And what I love about it is that, that that water is able to go in and out between the two buckets. And once I've had it good and clean, I can take the lid off and check it and see how well it's doing. It looks great. I can take this out and set it aside. And I can, I have a second thing here to, to rinse it out with. But I like how when I lift up the bucket, all the water drains into the bucket below. And so I can, once I've got that all murky and muddy, I just throw away that water and you do the same process with a clean gallon of water to rinse it. It's that simple. Now let me give you one little secret and that is if you made our homemade detergent, which is fantastic, a lot of you incidentally ask, is it, is it safe for HE washers and all of those kind of things? Yes, it is. But the secret that I use is always to rinse with a little bit of the white distilled vinegar. And that's what I would do in this as well. It actually is a wonderful rinse, rinsing agent to break down any soap that you didn't get rinsed out already. But furthermore, it's fantastic for softening your clothes. It acts as a very natural fabric softener and it won't smell like vinegar. If you're worried about that, you can always put a couple of drops of um, essential oils or something into it when you rinse your cycle. But literally, all you need to do is rinse your clothing out and then wring it out and hang it on the laundry line. And there you have a very cheap, very simple, wonderful rudimentary washing machine. I will say one thing, a windy day is the perfect day to make your own washing machine and hang the laundry out to dry. I hope you've enjoyed the last few minutes with me and I hope you go and make one of these for yourself. It is incredibly efficient for as simple as it is and I know it could certainly come in handy in the future. Now, we have lots of other great episodes coming up, and I hope you join us again after you've shared this with somebody that you love and made one of these for yourselves. But until I see you again, will you take the time to go out and find one person and be a blessing to them today? I hope you will. Until then, God bless you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.
Now before you go, I want to read to you Philippians 4, 4 through 7. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's getting dark out there, so go out and glow. <laughs>